the name of the sutra is called Chakkavati Sihanada Sutta. Sihanada. Siha means lion. Nada means raw. Lion's raw of the Buddha. How he explained the development and deterioration of the mankind. What are the causes? Who is behind? Whether there is any supernatural power or living being such as God or devil, if not some other universal phenomena or worldly conditions or our way of life, our way of thinking, our way of doing things, and how we live. So when we discuss, as mentioned by the Buddha, we can understand. What are the causes for these changes? So we can understand within our lifetime, for the last, say, about 50 to 60 years time, how many changes have taken place in this world? And uh, how we are going on changing our attitude, our way of thinking, our food, our dress, our homes, our transport, and what sort of amusement, entertainment, pleasures, and what sort of fear, suffering, tension, suspicion, jealousy, hatred, discrimination, so many changes. So when you study the history of mankind, about few thousand years ago, how they lived, they have never come across many of those good and bad experiences. Their way of life was very simple, and their main purpose was survival. They have done everything only for their living, their food, shelter, and they have discovered certain medicines or precautions as far as pleasure or worldly or sensual pleasures are concerned. Only sexual pleasure, it is natural. Then occasionally some sort of singing and movement as dance they had even at that time, little bit, that's all. But they lived happily because their fear, their tension, their suspicions and our fear and suspicions and uncertainty, when you compare, we can see there is a vast difference. In fact, we do not suffer, we do not worry regarding our food or clothing or shelter or sex. But in those days, they had to worry only for these things. Then why do we worry? I have never heard, especially here in this country, so far, no one has died without food, a starvation. Somehow the other they get something to eat. But in many other countries, 
not in thousands, in millions, are dying without food. Clothing, yes, you can see, before the Chinese New Year, amount of old clothing, they come and dump here in this temple. When we send these old clothing to some other countries, to them, they are the most precious, valuable clothing they have never seen in their life. But to you they are old clothing. And the way how they live <coughs> in mud hut, atap house, even without a mud hut or any shelter, they take shelter only certain trees, the pavement, millions. What about us? If our house is out of date, that architecture is not suitable for the modern way of life, we demolish that and we want a new pattern, new architecture. Now that is our way of life. But we are not happy. Something is wrong somewhere. Yesterday when I was very busy attending to my correspondence that I get from foreign countries, one young man came in to see me. He told me that he wants to see me. I asked whether it is very urgent. Yes, he said very urgent. Or what is that? Uh, it is about my love affairs. All right, what is your problem? I am facing a lot of problems because of my love. Then if you know you have to come across so many problems, why do you want to make love? Forget about that. Uh, this is the only advice that I can give. Don't love anymore. You will be free from all these problems. So he went with me. So he, he want to get immediate solution from me. Again I told me, how can you expect uh, some sort of ideas and solution from a man uh, who did not start this way of love in his life, not in this way of love. There are many things that we do not know how to make love, but you know better than me. <laughs> All right, let us come to this subject. <clears throat> the Buddha started this Chakravarti Sihanada Sutta saying like this, when human beings were cultured, civilized, their way of life was very favorable. They could satisfy with their life. The reason is they take a refuge in them without taking refuge in another person. Uh, These sayings of the Buddha you can see in Mahaparinibbana Sutra also, the last discourse. He departed from this world giving this final advice. What is this? Take refuge in you. Don't depend on others to take refuge to gain your final salvation. Now, this is the Buddhist attitude. So why do we want to take refuge in others? Because we have no confidence in us. We think that we cannot find out. Because of that negative attitude, we always think that others are more powerful. Others can give us all these things, what we cannot gain. Uh, this is the way how we abuse our confidence. But in those days people had that confidence. By maintaining this confidence, 
they concentrated on <coughs> four way of mindfulness you have heard according to satipatthana sutra way of mindfulness how they have concentrated analyzed understood the nature of life the nature of existence the nature of the formations of physical body the nature of the mind and the nature of the worldly conditions and situations and environments and you know and we never consider never analyze and think to understand these things therefore the easiest way that we have adapted is to take refuge in somebody else that is called a spiritual bankruptcy you never give a chance for your mind to think and understand always divert your mind towards somebody either the buddha or some of the god and goddesses and bodhisattvas so many others but if you have that confidence in you you never depend on any of those even the buddha remember we worship and respect and honor and follow the buddha but taking refuge in the buddha is an entirely different thing the buddha says this don't follow me blindly don't think that i can give you your final salvation therefore don't simply come and worship and pray thinking that i can give you everything there is no body in this world who can do that but i can do only one thing i can tell you what to do for that and how to do that so it is your duty to do that don't wait for me to do that for you and this is the nature of buddhism but you don't want that you want somebody else to do for you that is why I always go and pray and pray and pray and worship and worship but if you are tent fulfill your duties responsibilities make use of your intelligence is not necessary for you to go on praying and praying and praying and worshiping uh, what are those four now i want to know how far you can remember all these important items or the advice given by the buddha so according to satipatthana sutta or the way of mindfulness we have four main objects for us to concentrate what is the first one uh, kaya anupassana kaya anupassana concentrate on kaya body kaya anupassana second one vedana anupassana vedana anupassana meaning concentrate on your feeling every second physically and mentally you experience three kinds of feeling pleasant unpleasant and neutral concentrate do you concentrate of course when there's a pain you yell you don't concentrate that's all and you hate uh, that is the wrong attitude when you hate your own on 
own pain. You do not know you pollute your own mind. Hatred is hatred, whether you develop towards you or towards somebody else. It is hatred. Now, third one, Chittanupassana. What is Chitta? Mind. Concentrate on your mind. You have a mind, but you do not know the nature of your own mind. You have your own imaginations, that's all. When you analyze the nature of your mind, you can understand what sort of mind that you have. Then you can understand your weaknesses and development, both. Fourth one, or the last one, Dhammanupassana. Dhamma Anupassana, Dhammanupassana. Meaning, what is that? There are two meanings. Can you tell me what are those two meanings? Analysis of Dhamma Anupassana. In the book, translations, you can see Dhamma means certain good and bad thoughts which appear in our mind. This is called dham. Chitta, the mind is one thing. Thought is another thing. Remember these two things. Thoughts are created by the mind. Therefore, mind is one thing. Thought is another thing. Nature of the mind is one thing and the attitude of the thoughts that we create is another thing. Now this is one meaning. Another meaning, natural phenomena, nature of the world, nature of existence. There are many things that we cannot understand. Because of that we create our own ideas or imagination, thinking, oh, this is the act of a God who creates all these things in this way. Some others say, no, this is the nature of this natural phenomenon. There is no person behind. Now let us take beautiful, colorful, fragrant flowers. And who is behind? And look at the shape of these flowers. So many people say, God created all these things. We use this word, God, because we cannot understand. For anything that we cannot understand, we say God. That's all. But some others say, it is, this is the nature of all these worldly conditions that which exist and how they contribute Jointly, they are duties. Now let us take another example. There are millions of different kinds of living beings on this earth. Visible and invisible. Useful and useless. But these two words we use by considering our way of life. Useful to us 
therefore we say they are useful living beings useless to us we cannot make use of them therefore we say useless to us but not to this world we never think in that nuisance to us they are existent is nuisance to us but their existence is not nuisance to the world you do not know that so as human beings who have more deep understanding knowledge what we do we destroy all those living beings who are nuisance to us and useless to us we are doing lot of damages to this world we never think in that each and every living being that we appear in this world contribute something you do not know to maintain this world this environment atmosphere i mean rain and heat and the wind and so many things for our living and for the existence of so many other things otherwise they never come into existence so in the same way there are many forces energies factors reason forces known and unknown contribute for the formation of colors smell fragrance beauty shape flowers fruits leaves plant for everything we say god created that's all because we cannot understand when you study botany i think there is no god behind it in the scientific discovery they have given certain discovered certain factors and energies and causes according to their limited knowledge but there are many more things that they cannot understand so this particular subject is more than enough for us to talk for a few hours this analytical knowledge so first item is kai our body formation of this physical body and why this body is like this why some other living beings are like this why some living beings have no leg why some have hundreds and why birds got wings and why fish and swim by using the tail the strength is there the tail and two wings inside both sides are very weak the power of the tail and the easiest answer is god created like this but we never study or think the evolution development environment and how their way of life contributed for these changes now here on this earth today our way of life our way of thinking our food our clothing how they use our clothing what sort of material we use according to this climate because we concern only beauty just to beautify that is enough because of that later we know a lot of sicknesses and problems 
I have seen many ladies who applied this thing for some time to beautify. When we happen to meet them without this plaster here, you can see how the skin was affected. No natural lips there, go on already. So we completely ruin, in simple language, our physical body and appearance because we concern too much about our beauties. These things contribute for our deterioration, physically, mentally. That's why I told you, our way of life is responsible for many of our changes. Now let us take another example, uh, still medical science cannot discover. Now in this country and Singapore, cancer has become a common sickness. Even a little bit of suspicion regarding certain sicknesses. At once, people think oh, that this must be cancer. It has become very common. Why? Something is wrong somewhere, but no one can find that. In the stomach, intestine, column, yeah. then the bladder, kidney, liver, pancreas, lungs, throat, tongue, mouth, brain, neck. Very common. Why? Who is responsible for that? Something is wrong with our way of life, our food, our daily routine. We are leading an artificial life not natural life. How many animals suffer from cancer? Heart trouble and blood pressure or gastric ulcer? If you observe, you can understand. Because they take natural food, they don't use extra gadgets, clothing, by nature they had their own clothing. Birds and animals, they have their own clothing. To avoid heat and cold and rain, they have natural clothing. Shelter also they have natural shelter. And they have proper time to go to bed. They never waste their time for another thing, without going to bed, although they have no bed. Of course, those animals who associate with human beings, like cats and dogs, had to suffer, because they had to follow their masters. And they suffer from the same sickness but not those animals who lead the animal life, animal needs. Now this is a good example. If we lead a natural life, follow our daily routine in normal way without becoming slaves to our senses for indulgence, without becoming slaves to our food, we cannot take natural food, we must add some sort of color to beautify these drinks or food, ah, then look nice. But we never think that there are certain chemicals which are poisons to our physical food. Those days people never took food which 
they have preserved in certain vessel or tin. Now today we produce food here and cane food. This cane food we send to some other country. How many months and how many years they keep these things in the shop? Then they open and eat. After eating, nobody knows what sort of sicknesses we get. How many people die at the same thing? After eating certain sardine or certain roots from the tea. Poison. Color. Natural color. In every fruit there is some sort of color. And rice, grain, different colors you can see. It's a natural color. But we cannot satisfy. We have to add something else. So we have become slaves to all these things, then invited so many problems. Now in certain countries, many people have started to give, to give up artificial food and go and settle down in countryside, hillside, to take natural water, fresh water, have fresh air, and natural roots and rice and vegetables. And they experience healthy life. Ah, this is the problem. So this analysis is important not only to go to heaven or to attain nirvana, for us to maintain a healthy life without facing so many problems and burdens and sufferings and difficulties. Every day we are grumbling for something, but we do not know why. So the formations of this physical body we can analyze and understand. Then we know what it is. After that we are not going to worry too much. Then the second one is Vedana. Pleasant and unpleasant, these two we take seriously, the neutral one we neglect. When there is pleasant and nice and soothing feeling, we want to keep this feeling with us. We develop our craving towards that feeling. But the nature of feeling is such, it don't remain for a long period. It appear and disappear. Appear and disappear. So when that present feeling is disappeared, and we go mad, we cannot tolerate that. After that, we are willing to do any kind of immoral or dirty or cruel thing to gain that pleasure. Earlier we have never thought the nature of pleasure. Again, when there is a very bad, unbearable pain, ache, without realizing what it is, without concentrating on this pain, we hate. When we hate, we pollute the purity of the mind. Then we can do nasty things. We lose our temper also because of this pain. But if we concentrate on this pain, we can forget this pain. We can take away our mind from this pain because the mind experiences the pain, not the body. Now this is the advantage of this concentration. Vedana. Again we have to concentrate. 
pleasant and unpleasant feeling, just like wind. All these are passing shores. They come, appear and disappear. Again appear and disappear. When the bad feeling come to us, then again goes, this bad feeling also appears and later disappears. This is not permanent. Then why do we worry? Now that is called understanding. And the third one, chitta, mind. What is this mind? We do not know. And when we analyze, we can understand we have six kinds of mental attitudes as our character. No one is free from this. Raga charita, doha charita, moha charita, buddhi charita, vitakta charita, saddha charita. Six. How nice if you can understand our own character. Raga charita, raga. Lustful or sexual or romantic. Some people are crazy for this. They can forget everything because of this. They can spend everything what they earn only for that. They can neglect, neglect or forget their parents or all the others because of this. They can neglect their religion, their culture, their tradition, everything because of this. See how they become slaves to this. By realizing this, oh, I am like this, then analyze. If I go on like this, what would be the destiny, my way of life, the future? Why not I try to adjust my way of life? Uh, that understanding is important. Dosa charita, hatred, anger, moods, temperaments can create so many problems. At home, every day fighting with your family members. When you work in your office or factory or anywhere, you fight with others because of your temper. When you go somewhere else, also people don't like you, hate you, scared to talk to you, associate with you because of your temperament. By knowing this, don't think you cannot change, you cannot adapt your way of life. Don't try to glorify, saying, must understand I am hot tempered. It is a weakness that people are scared of you. They cannot trust you. They may run away from you. By nature some people are like this, but your own understanding is the important thing. Here as mentioned by the Buddha, he says, I cannot take away your anger. A God also cannot take away your anger. But I can tell you how to get rid of this anger. Now this is the Buddha's teaching. It is practical. Then the third one is Moha Charita. Moha means deluded, not intelligence. Understanding is very poor. Never penetrate into the mind. Cannot analyze. Cannot grasp anything into the mind. Some are like that. So, by realizing your own nature, you can avoid 
jealousy, weaknesses, and adapt your way of life according to your understanding capacity. In Parabhava Sutta, the Buddha says, a foolish man slowly go on digging his own grave because he cannot understand his own nature, his ability. So, if we know, or we are like this, then you can understand your limit. Don't go beyond that limit. Then you won't get into trouble. Next one, Vitakka Charit. Vitakka means uncertainty, confusion, and distorted ideas. Very difficult to create a clear picture in anything. When I say something and you create your own idea by using that weakness, then your understanding has become entirely different. And words that I use also, you interpret according to your way of thinking. Then there will be misunderstanding. And you cannot understand the real meaning of this, see, confuse, create more confusion in your mind. There are many who cannot understand things. They create entirely different concept, different idea in their mind, having read or having heard something. This is another correct nature of our mind. Then the next one is buddhi charita. Buddhi means intelligence. Some are intelligent by nature from childhood. You can see they can understand things very easily. They can catch the meaning. And their thinking power is very sharp. I have noticed this even among children. What is the cause for that? That is due to their experience, previous experience. How they have developed, cultivated their mind during the previous existence. When we abuse our way of thinking and intelligence and we become dullard, very dull, because we never used our mind properly. Anything, any article, you keep somewhere without using, you can see after some time, the rust. We had to use it then become sharp. A knife, if you keep without using for one or two years, after that you cannot cut anything, blunt, then you have to sharp. The mind also like that. That is why you have to use this. So when you listen, uh, you give your mind to think, then sharpening your mind. When you read something, you have to think and think and think to catch the idea. Ah, then going on, sharpening, sharpening your mind to understand. If you don't use both, mind becomes very dark. You become crazy only for certain worldly pleasures. Those things never give any knowledge, any wisdom to you. Become more dark. Ah, this is the nature of our mind. Then the last one is Saddha Charita. Saddha means devotion. 
many innocent people become the victims to cunning people because of this. Especially when they come to religion. They have too much devotion, faith, towards religion. They are willing to do anything when others ask them to do. But they never think, never analyze whether it is true or not. So, innocent people, when they use their devotion and kindness without understanding, get into trouble. They are known as kind-hearted fools. Yes, they are fools, but kind-hearted. Get into trouble, cunning fellows know how to make use of them. We have seen this everywhere. They cannot understand, they believe what they say. Yes, it is true. Wasting their money, their time, their effort. They, they cannot understand whether it is true or not. Uh, that kind of devotion is dangerous. Understanding and devotion, or wisdom and devotion, the Buddha says, just like two wings, two wings of a bird to fly. By using only one wing, a bird cannot, cannot stand. So if you use only your devotions and kindness, you become victims and remain as kind-hearted fools. Others make use of you. If you use only your intelligence, and you become hard nut. You have no faith, you have no confidence, and you take all these things as dry philosophy, just to talk, to show others how clever you are. You have wonderful knowledge. Uh, this is the danger of intellect without devotion. So when we come to religion, both must be there, intelligence and devotion. Without devotion, religion becomes a dry subject. If you use only devotion, no, only intellect, without devotion you become a skeptic. must know how to balance both. I am sorry to say, I have seen this in many parts of the world. Ladies become the victims because they are innocent. Very easy to bluff. Cunning people, cunning monks, visitors, they know how to bluff them. I can tell you a simple incident what happened one or two months ago. A young monk came to this temple at midnight. He said he wanted to stay here. I had to go and open the gate. All were sleeping. At midnight, so I opened the gate and allowed him to sleep. Next day morning he came and asked money for him to go. Far distant, he said he hadn't got money. Then I asked, who asked you to come here? For what purpose? So what is the purpose of your coming? To come and ask money for you to go back. No answer. We haven't got money to give like this. You must know the reason why. So I did not give anything. I am not a kind-hearted fool. I understand after that he approached some poor ladies. 
He has collected few hundred dollars, saying, I want to buy my ticket to go somewhere. Left. After three days, I saw he is here again in this temple. Uh, see how he blocked. He did not go. Then he goes to another temple, also collect money by telling the same story. So don't behave like kind-hearted fools. I am giving you this advice. Don't trust with the monks or laymen at once without investigating who this person is, why he want to collect this. You have to do everything by using your mind. Don't trust anybody at once. So, devotion is very important, but very soft. You know, soft ground is very easy to collapse, very easy to dig. Others can dig very easily. If your heart is very soft, others know how to dig, take out everything. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. So we have to concentrate, introspect, analyze, admit and understand. So my mind is like this. Then you get the chance to adjust, to adapt your way of life, to avoid certain problems and difficulties. Then come to the last one, <coughs> Dhamma Nupassana. Just now I told you two ways we can explain this Dhamma. The thoughts created by the mind by using some of these ingredients, just now I mentioned, either anger or lustful thoughts or intelligence or devotion, uh, some of these uh, mental attitudes we use to create some thoughts, to do something or to say something. Uh, here the Dhamma means concentrate on these thoughts created by the mind. Now, first we concentrated on our mind to understand the nature of the mind. Now we are concentrating on the thoughts created by our mind. Take for instance, when you are tempted, stimulated, intoxicated, through the influence of lustful thought. At that time, you are willing to do any kind of immoral or vulgar, or even harmful method to fulfill your desire you are craving. Now you can understand the meaning of concentrating on our thoughts which are created by using some of those mental attitudes. I remember Socrates, a Greek philosopher, when he was very young, one day he has gone to a place where respectable people never go. Now you can understand where he went. When he came out from this house, accidentally he met his teacher. The teacher saw that he is coming out from that house. His teacher is uh, uh, Plato or Aristotle? I think Aristotle. Hmm? Then who is that? Plato? No. 
who is his teacher, a well-known philosopher, and we forget about the name. So now he had no guts, he had no courage to look at the face of his teacher. He was going like this, you know, like this. And then the teacher also, hey, Socrates, where are you going? And then, very shameful, he said, very shameful. <laughs> and then the teacher told him, this attitude, hmm, this shamefulness, you have had when you enter into this house, not when you come out from this house. See the deep meaning of the advice. At that time, you have had this shame. It is a shameful thing for me to go there. When you come out from this place, there is nothing. Ah, this is the way, the advantage we gain when you concentrate on our thoughts. These things are good, these things are bad, these things are harmful to me as well as towards others. Ah, this is called concentration. There are thirty-one thirty-one items for me to explain the main causes of our development and deterioration of the mankind for thousands and thousands and millions of years. Uh, still I am dealing with the number one. See how deep, how meaningful the Buddha states. Here he says, at that time, when people had that self-confidence and concentrated on these four ways of mindfulness, they were free from so many troubles and problems and worries and difficulties and lamentation and sicknesses and maintain good health, long life. Because they know how to avoid mental pollution. By leading a normal, natural life, they maintain healthy, physical body, like a long life. Ah, that is the first item. But today, we never consider any of these items as important things in our life. So what we follow? In the newspapers or the magazines, we see advertisement. Ah, this one, take this vitamin, ah, that one is good for long life. Take this vitamin, this one is good for sex life. Take this vitamin, this one is good to beautify. And take this thing to beautify. And this one is reduced to weight. This one is increase the weight. How many thousands they are spending to reduce the weight? Can you imagine? In other countries, millions are dying without food. Here we are spending millions to reduce the weight. See our way of life. Uh, then number two. I think we can complete number two. That is the first item. When the rulers of the country or the government, or the government authorities are righteous, noble, reasonable, understanding, kind-hearted, honest. They rule the country without any discrimination, racial, religious, cultural, traditional, discrimination, no discrimination whatsoever. The rulers regard all his subjects equally. When you refer to Emperor Asoka's rock addicts, 2,300 years old rock addict, one rock addict is here in this book. He always used the word for the whole mankind, 
especially in India. My sons, my daughters, my grandsons, my granddaughters. These are the words here you can see in this book also. I like to see them as noble people, virtuous people who follow the dharma. He used the word dharma everywhere. And this is the way how to rule a country without any discrimination. At that time there were many other religions in India. When you read Indian history, you can see, although he was a very strong Buddhist, promoted Buddhism all over the world, he has not shown any hostility, discrimination towards other existing religions in India. Brahminism, Jainism, and so many other religions existed. He supported all the existing religions. People were very happy. There was nobody to complain. There is another Jataka story you might have heard. You may not believe because you never practice it. A king who ruled the country without any discrimination, hundred percent righteous life. So he wanted to find out whether there is a single human being in his kingdom who cannot satisfy with his way of ruling this country. He asked so many people. Everybody said, yes, we are very happy. Actually, there is no complaint. But he cannot satisfy. He thought that these people don't like to criticize him because he is the ruler. So what he did? He went out in disguise as an ordinary man. So when he was going somewhere in the countryside, he saw a man who was sitting under a tree. He went to see this man and they had a talk. So while they were talking, the man who was seated under the tree gave him a fruit from the same tree. For this man is a king in disguise to eat. Everybody knew that this fruit is very bitter. No one can eat. Then this man asked, I know this is very bitter. How can I eat this? And the man who was sitting under the tree told him, Every day I eat these fruits. You better eat and see. Ah, then, very sweet. They are very funny. In my garden also I have, but very bitter, cannot eat. What is the reason? Then this man told him the secret. Do you know, <clears throat> there are two reasons. First thing, I have been radiating my loving kindness, my meditation under this tree for many years. I completely purify the atmosphere around this area. So such bitter things also turned into sweets. You know, when certain fierce animals, wicked people, associate with holy, virtuous people. Slowly they change their wild attitude and become very tame and obedient. It is natural. So the radiations of loving-kindness can change a lot of you know, atmosphere and others' mental attitude. Now, if you try to irritate me, abusing, insulting, accusing, blaming me, 
if I maintain cheerfulness, serenity, happiness in my mind without showing any anger or hostile attitude towards you, what will happen? Later, you also change your way of life. And that is how changes take place. So radiations of loving kindness can change the whole world. But today, we are facing all these problems. Human beings never do that. They radiate anger, hatred, jealousy, cruel mental. Polluted whole atmosphere. Then a lot of changes have taken place. They are unhealthy and very unfortunate. Man's mind creates all these things. That's what earlier the Buddha has said. Man's mind is responsible for all these good and bad things. Nobody else is responsible. You can see God and devils and ghosts, but man's mind is responsible. And then he says, the second reason. Do you know the ruler of this country? Because he does not know that he is the ruler. The ruler of this country is a wonderful man. Everybody in his kingdom always praise, appreciate, respect, because he never discriminate anybody. And his great virtues, good qualities, kindness and compassion contributed a great deal for these changes. These two things. Virtue and my radiations on loving kindness. These two things are working. All are happy. Here the Buddha says, if the ruler is good, then go from, from king to the minister and from minister to deputy minister, from deputy minister to the chief clerk and chief secretary and permanent secretary and go on up to the office boy. If the ruler is bad and wicked and cunning, and all the others also follow the, this attitude, the Buddha says. Now what is happening all over the world, in every country? The attitude of the rulers and the government and the authorities. How many honest, how many kind-hearted and sincere Rulers are there in this world. In certain countries we have read in the newspaper how they have blood, millions and billions of dollars, innocent people, hard-earned money by bluffing people as rulers. Then how can we expect prosperity, peace and happiness in such countries? So here, all over the world, rulers as well as the subject are cunning, selfish, and discrimination, hostility, then hatred, jealousy. See? Where is happiness? Where is peace? Where is security? Uh, so in Chakravarti Sihanada Sutta, the Buddha says, the rulers must be honest and kind. Then all the others, followers also later become kind and honest. Uh, then the prosperity, good health, long life, peace and justice can be maintained. And go on. This is the number two. So we will continue. Next Friday.